Hi everyone, welcome back to Med Ed Animation. This will be another one of my tutorials to introduce people to the animation program Synfig um, and just showing some basic techniques. So I was inspired to make this tutorial uh, because I was working on a project the other day and I realized that I was kind of using some valuable fundamental skills here. So the things I'll focus on in this video are one, I'll talk about the use of Z-depth um, to manipulate over time the distance between you and the different layers, such as if you wanted to have a layer initially be in front of another layer and then later be behind it. Um, and then I'll also, uh, with this ghost here, I'll make it look like its face is rotating. Um, so it'll be uh, using the blend mode onto for face contents, um, which, is, which you can then translate to doing a head turn for any basic character you have. So generally here, um, not to get into why I was doing this, but you know, as one does, I was creating a video about types of dementia and wanted to show this type of brain having some hallucinations. So I made this ghost um, and actually a moon also that kind of orbit around it. So I wanted to create that orbit kind of look. Oh, and the other disclaimer I should make is that this time loop, I'll show you at the end just to make it look like it's looping over and over, um, but uh, just hide that for now, or don't worry about it for now. Okay, so let's get this ghost moving. So my goal is to have this ghost orbit around the brain, which means initially I just need to animate it going basically back and forth, right? And then I'm gonna do other things, including this Z-depth magic um, to make it look like it's going behind and front, behind and front. Okay, so I'm gonna turn animate mode on by changing our little friend from green to red here. Um, and I'm just gonna use, and I've selected my whole ghost folder. So whatever character, or whatever you're, you want to manipulate, um, I'm just clicking that whole group. Uh, I'm clicking the green dot to control just the origin of it. So I'm not worrying about rotating or scaling or anything right now. I'm just moving the position of the object. So, um, oh, and I think I'm at 24 frames per second. So let's say I want the object to orbit, make one orbit in two seconds. That means it would take 24 frames or one second to get to one side and another second or 24 frames to get back. So, um, and I'm not gonna do anything fancy with keyframes here. I'm just gonna kind of animate forward. So sue me. So, all right, so at frame 24, we want this ghost to have made it over to this side of the screen. So let's do that. So I'm, my cursor's at frame 24. I have these guys on, so it knows that um, it's going to maintain at my zero frame, uh, frame zero keyframe, it's gonna maintain this position, but at frame 24, it's going to go somewhere else. So let's grab our green dot and translate that ghost over to the other side of the screen here, okay? I'm hitting save constantly in case Synfig does its quitting thing. <laughs> um, and as you can see, if I scrub back and forth, our friend is now going across the brain. And it looks like it's in front of it because currently that layer is above the brain layer. Okay, so, um, and then sure enough, what do you think to finish the orbit? I'm going to go to double that frame 48. So I think this will be at the two second mark. By the way, I recently learned, didn't you know you can type in seconds too? You can go like 2S. Boom, and that's like 48 frame, or if I go to one second, like you can do seconds or frames in a nose. Ah, so cool. Thanks, and big people. Um, oh, that was wrong, uh, two second. All right, so I'm at the two second mark, and if I want, and because I want this orbit to look clean, I'm not just gonna click and drag back to this region, because I might get it wrong. So what I really wanna do is right click this waypoint from the uh, zero, time zero, and duplicate it with my cursor at 48. Now I know that this, uh, frame 48 position is exactly the same as the one I had originally, okay? And in between, it's going back and forth. But this doesn't look like it's orbiting yet, right? So there are two things I need to do to make it look more like the object is orbiting. And the one you guys most care about probably is the Z-depth thing. So let me show you that. So let's say I want it to go behind and then in front. So the way I'm gonna do this is, I'm actually gonna change the type of waypoint to constant because I just want control. I just wanna say, okay, for this half of the orbit, switch to this depth. For this half of the orbit, switch to this depth. So let's so change this from clamped or whatever you have it on to constant. And what we'll do, oh, and actually for educational purposes, I lied. I'm gonna have it go in front first and then behind on the second half, okay. So I want you to look at this thing called Z-depth. So the way to remember like positive versus my negative, you know, which one is actually making it closer or further away is I want you to think of the higher the Z depth, the larger the positive value, 
that is a larger distance from your face, your eyes, to the object. So if I raise this z depth to like one, two, three, a thousand, that's telling the computer, move this layer further away and below more of the other layers in the stack. Even though the layer is sitting here, as I raise the z depth, it'll go below the moon layer, below the brain layer, below this. And, you know, and so these are their baseline z depths in this column here, but you can manipulate that further with this control here, plus minus. So away is positive values, closer in is negative values. So again, what did I say? I want to have it, um, so, okay, so for the first half it's good, right? We want it to pass in front of the brain. But then once it reaches its extreme here, I want this ghost to now get ready to go behind the brain. So do I increase or decrease the z-depth value based on what I said? I increase it, right? Because I want it to go further from my face and behind the brain. So I don't actually, I'm not even gonna do the math, I'm just gonna say like five. So look, so now if I scroll, because it's constant, is the c to z depth here, it's zero, 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 boom, becomes five. So now watch, when it comes back the other way, boop, now it is further away from me than that brain. And then basically if I was doing more, if I wanted to come back, I could always duplicate that z depth from the beginning, and now it's back to zero. All right, so in front, add a z depth of zero, then boom, z depth of five goes away, the whole thing's far away. So that's how you use z depth. Um, so that's how, if you have a complicated scene where things are going in front and behind things, you can control that. And again, using that constant waypoint instead of clamped can just be helpful there. Okay, so now we have in front, behind, in front, behind. Um, and, you know, if you have the newer version of Synfig, you should have these tools where you can control the playback and loop it. But I'll just show you, I ended up doing a time loop. So if you add a time loop layer, set it to 48 frames in duration, um, and I'll just turn that on. Um, now when I hit play, um, you know, it goes in front, behind, in front, behind, whee, right? Okay, great. So um, just wanted to show you that. So, um, do, 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 do. okay, so there's one other thing. So when you look at this looping ghost orbiting, there's something else that you may or may not be able to see and glean that is making it less realistic that it's orbiting. And that is that, when an object is closer to you, it should get bigger, and when it's further, it should get smaller. So carefully remembering to change my waypoint style back to clamped or linear, maybe, um, and not um, not constant, and we'll go back to time zero. Um, I now wanna just slightly scale this to different sizes at their given points. So again, I'm being lazy, I'm not being good at a good role model about keyframes and that sort of thing, um, but I'm just gonna manually say, okay, Around time 12, in the middle of its passage here, uh, I'm gonna scale this ghost a little bit bigger, right? Because it's coming closer to that camera. And then as it comes back, when it's there, I wanna scale it about the same size. So actually look, in transform, I could go down to scale here and pick just the scale part to duplicate. So to say, okay, at time 24, I want you to be scaled but not located the same way you were at time zero. Great, so now I have it getting bigger, then getting smaller again, and then what do you think is gonna happen here when it goes behind? I need to make it even smaller, so around 36, I'll scale it even smaller there. And then again, at time 48, I will duplicate that original scale size which was found here and here. So I'll just take this friend and duplicate it there. And actually it's looping anyway, so you can't tell, but uh, woo. See how see that? See how that adds some realism to it? As real as a tremoring brain with a face with a ghost around it could be. Um, yeah. So uh, so that just adds a little more life to that. Okay. So that's the the orbiting z depth situation. And then the other thing I wanted to show you, which is fun in this case, is how to make it look like the ghost's face is just rotating around his body. So kind of like the Earth, right? We're having this thing orbit as well as rotate. So. What I did here, I'm gonna turn off animate mode just so I don't screw up here. Um, and actually, let me set this up how it was when I made it, just so you can see the process. Okay, oh, interesting. So, why did I do things the way I did here? So actually, I'm even gonna break this a little further just to show you a point, which is, okay, let's say, let's say I just put all the parts of my ghost 
in this one group called whole ghost, right? And I have my mouth, my eyes, the ghost base that we talked about, and then that glow layer behind it. Well, um, what, I, what you wanna do when you have something like eyes on a cartoon face or something is you wanna switch their blend mode from the default, which is called composite, uh, over here in this menu here, to onto. And onto, think of it as like, it will only appear when it is over and put onto the object below it. But when it's just over like something not in that same folder, so let's say the background here is outside of that folder, it won't appear. Um, yeah, so uh, to make that point more clear, if I, um, let's say I made these things bright orange, bright red, whatever, uh, and then I hid these layers, there's nothing below it, right? So you no longer see the eyes or the mouth, even though they're bright orange, you should see them, but because it's onto and there's nothing else in that group for it to go onto, you don't see it. It doesn't matter that there's a black background back here because that's outside of that group. So that's why the organized groups become really important here, okay? But as soon as you add the base or even that glow, that onto layer shows up, okay? So let me see if I can, without freezing synfig, hit undo a bunch of times. It's always risky. All right, let's see. Oh, I think I went one too far. Redo. Yeah, okay. So now these are on to again. All right. Well, that's all fine and good. But even, so what I realized when I was doing this, um, as we'll see in a moment, the goal is to, you know, you're going to move these guys around the face, right? But look, because of that onto effect, it's putting it onto the glow. So it's still visible when I don't want it to be. I want these face contents to only show up when they're on that main hunk of bed sheet that makes up these cartoon ghosts. So that's why I isolated these guys in a folder and left the glow out of that. So now, I'll call it like solid ghost, kind of an oxymoron. Um, so now these mouth, you know, the mouth and the eye, look, they only show up when they're on that solid ghost and not when they're on the glowing part. And look, you can see already, see how I move that? It almost creates the illusion that it's like a head turning and then it's just, it goes out of view when it leaves the side of the face. So that's a really handy technique. So what we're gonna do is just animate that process now. But the key was just that you organized it this way in the first place. So that if you have a head with face parts of a character, just put them in a group where the face parts overlie only the base of the face or whatever it is that you're doing. Same for like spots on an animal. Let's say you have a character with a body and spots, you can just have it go onto, the, onto that layer. Oh, and also for shadows, that's also important too. You can use that same effect for shadows. But enough rambling, so let's make this happen. So um, basically I just wanted this to be like a comical sort of face rotation thing. How did I do this? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna turn on my animation friend here. And let's say that, I'm just making this up, but, oh, and it's kind of swiveling, so that's distracting. But let's say that by frame 12, I guess we'll just do this all kind of in time. Um, that is enough time for the face contents to migrate fully, look, off the face. So what that'll do is that if I scrub backwards by using control comma, by the way, which lets you scrub through time, look, bloop, it's gradually rolling off the face. Creates that illusion, right? And there are things you can do to make it super realistic, but most of the time for a simple cartoon like this, this does the trick. Okay, now what I wanna do is, because it needs to appear back around the other side, what I do is I cheat a little bit, and I'm just seeing where my waypoint was. So at frame 12 is where we had to go off the face. So just right at the next very frame, at frame 13, you want it to immediately be on the other side of that face so that it just so that the viewer doesn't see it go across. Um, noting also that um, if you then like expanded the timeline, you might create new waypoints in between where you see across, but issue for another time. And then, uh, and then as you go forward more, let's say like to frame 24, I guess, um, it goes back onto the face. Oh, you know what? I can actually even, you can do that also with a copy and paste too. So I take my frame zero waypoint for these vertices. Oh, no, there's a glitch with that though. You can't do that. Because, so an annoying thing about Synfig is if I select these three layers and I, copy, and I duplicate um, a waypoint, it'll only duplicate it for like one of those layers. But if you do it for the group, it will work. So why don't we do it that way? So the canvas will include all that. So if I select this group, 
um, and then I duplicate, boom, right? So now see how it shifted there? So wait, I'll undo it again. See, I was a little off. Redo, that's how it looked after duplication. So um, another reason to have good groupings and layers because then you wanna be able to manipulate groups of waypoints at any level. Bloop, and even sets won't let you do that, so you really need the groups. Whee, all right. Um, where's it going? All right, uh, and let me see, is this, so if I hit play here, so I could keep going, right? I can do it around the other side, but I think you get the point, which is, so the steps I did is I took the face contents, made sure they were in their own group with just the ghost base. Um, I could have also just put mouth, eyes, mouth and eyes in a group, and then that group in a group with ghost base. Then I just would have had to make that group onto instead of the individual layers. Yeah, and then I just animated it so that it went off one side of the face, uh, and then immediately, boom, in the next frame, we were on the other side of the face to get ready to come back and back around. So when I hit play here, and again, this whole thing is looping because my time loop layers outside of all of those groups. You can see now that he's, woo, he's gone. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful um, and was a good review of Z-Depth and also how to do head turns using the onto blend effect. If you have questions or there are, th there are things I didn't make clear, let me know. Um, if you uh, spark other ideas for uh, Synfig tutorials, that would be most helpful to y'all. Uh, let me know and I'll do it. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned for more fun. Bye.